Hey everyone, welcome to the Live Live. <laughs> we're keeping it. Oh, we're keeping it. Okay. <laughs> we're just going with it. Keep it rolling. Hey everyone, welcome to the Live Love Artemis YouTube channel. It's we, podcast. Oh, it's our podcast. Sorry. We're all doing a podcast. Oh my god. Guys, I'm not with it today because we have a very special announcement that Raf's gonna go into. Yep. Um so I'm just kind of on cloud nine, but this is the podcast and we are your welcome co-hosts. To it. Welcome, Rafalina Merlino and Becky Rinkevich. And we are an international Philly-based real estate company that is on a mission to educate, inspire, and serve in all things real estate. Guys, we have big news. We do. We have really big news. As you can see, we have our rosé here. Cheers. That probably explains why I introduced the YouTube channel and the wrong person. Uh -huh. so, yep. Um, so... Let me just, I'm going to interview Becky today because I am in awe of what is happening um, for Becky, right? So Becky is the co-author of a book that's called The Only Woman in the Room, and she's going to talk to us more about it. However, I just want to sit on that title for a, woman, a moment to so a woman who has been the only woman in the room so many times and has had to earn her respect, dignity, and her place in the industry and in, and in life, right? Like nothing for Becky has been handed to her. Everything she has, she has done through, you know, grit, hard work and faith. Like I can really say, we were just talking about this last night. Like I have these rosy glasses on because I talk to her probably 90 times a day. We spend so much time together, but because she has this perspective on life where what it can happen and it will happen and it must happen because why would it, the universe want to give me what I so desire, right? So, mm -hmm. so this is the launch of the book day. We have like, it's just such an exciting day, guys. It's, it's such an honor to be partners with somebody who's doing something like this. So Becky, Aww. okay, first tell time, the story, tell them the story of how it happened. So about a year ago, I was approached by uh, a really good friend of mine. Her name is Ashley Wilson, and she is just a rock star in and of herself. She is a badass apartment syndicator. She just acquired uh, a $20 million apartment complex in Houston, Texas. Yeah. She also flips luxury homes on the main line. And she also is a fabulous equestrian and she rides in the hunter world. So we have that in common. We both are horse girls, horse lovers and real estate lovers. So she's been a mentor of mine for a few years and she called me about a year ago out of the blue and we were chatting you know we we're talking shop and talking real estate and investing and she's like well that's actually not really the reason i called i had a question for you and so she asked me she told me about her vision and she's been thinking about writing this book for um the last year and a half and this is a year ago so now two and a half years ago and she had a vision of asking 20 female real estate investors to co-author a book and everyone has a chapter that they contribute and write a chapter about their journey and uh, in the world of real estate investing. And she asked if I would be one of those authors to contribute. So of course I'm like on cloud nine and I'm like, of course I would love Mind to you, do she that. Even, we're like, we consider like, she's my, like the, the wife, right? Like we literally are like, our, or we consider our business as a marriage. So I didn't yeah. even know this until literally like the beginning of this week when you were allowed to announce it, we're like, yeah. wait, what? We're like, you, you and Barbara Corcoran sponsored the book. Yeah. It's like literally the most badass women in real estate. Like, it's not just like, it, I mean, really, you're, you're, she's being modest. I mean, these are the the women of real estate. These are women who are setting the, the bar across all aspects of real estate. So, I mean, to yeah, you, I just yeah, to, no, to make you. sure. She's, just, she's like my biggest like, like, woman. Me, I love her. Let me be <laughs> She, yeah, so I'm like, all right. So, and actually, you know, to be fully transparent, at first I was like, I am not worthy to be an author in this book. Uh -oh. Like I have really done, like compared to these women that are in there that have hundreds of rentals in their name, a huge portfolio, they own storage units all over the country. Uh -huh. They're investing in multiple states. They are private money lenders themselves. Like huge, huge things. And I'm like, I am like the little man on the totem pole here. Like I don't have that yet. And, and so I kind of felt a little intimidated, but you know, I'm like, you know what? I, uh, everyone has to start somewhere in real estate investing. So I'm going to be fully transparent and share my story and just 
and write, you know, as it's my heart is speaking into, into the computer. So, um, so I committed to doing it and um, we wrote our chapters in the beginning of 2020 before COVID hit. Um, but prior to Raph and I ever even talking about yeah. partnering. So yeah. I was in a whole different space. I was at a different brokerage. We hadn't started Artemis yet. And I wrote this, uh, my chapter, which is chapter 12 of the book. Um, and, uh, and then we submitted it. We had multiple rounds of editing. We had to get it published. And then we kind of just didn't really hear anything for a little while. And I honestly, I, with everything with going on with COVID and the starting the business and then our business ramping up and we have, you know, flips that are going on multiple projects. I kind of forgot, not forgot about it, but, but like, just, and it was in the back of my mind. Right. And then, um, we heard from our fearless leader, Ashley Wilson, that, um, like book was launching next week. And I'm like, Oh my God. So, so awesome. I was able to finally share with all my friends and family about it. And it officially just launched a few hours ago. It's now uh, three o'clock, 2.54 PM to be exact on Wednesday, <laughs> September 23rd. Yep. And um, yeah, so I'm interviewing Becky today, which is so cool. Oh God. <laughs> so, okay. Wait, hold on. Let me take a sip of my yeah, rosé real quick. Take a sip of your, your right. rosé. Um, okay. So writing a book has been a life dream. And it's interesting because myself, Nino and Becky all share this goal that we've never even spoken about. So you can imagine how incredible that is that she has done it. And now we're like, okay, Becky teaches everything. So that, you know, it's these aspirational things where like we, we are, I, I was just telling someone the other day, like for Becky and I, it's like, we don't succeed in spite of one another's partners, we succeed for each other. Mm -hmm. So it's a different, it's this synergy. And that's the thing that you find in that book is these women are women of synergy and women of wanting to see others prosper and succeed, which I think in a lot of times we don't really see that, right? No, for sure, definitely not. And actually, um, I, oh, that's what I was gonna say, I lost my train yeah. So I was telling Nino when I got into the office today, I'm like, you know, I, I have, I, I, we've spoken about it on the podcast and I, I've spoken about it in our team meetings, but um, I, ha back in 2016 or 2015, I started writing down in uh, a journal, these I am statements. And my, I would take my goals and put them into present day things, statements that like they've already occurred. So, I'm actually, when I go home today, I'm going to take a picture of my journal. I think it was from 2016. And I wrote, I am a published author back in 2016. And at the time I had no idea how to even write a book, who I would even talk to, to get it edited or published or get it on Amazon and get it, you know, able to be purchased and, you know, in real, you know, hard copy and printed and all that. I had no, no clue. I had no clue who I would even come across in my path of life to get me to that point. I would had no, no idea, but I wrote it and I felt with extreme conviction that I was actually an author. And then four years later, here we are. So, it's it, so awesome. that's why the law of attraction is real. Everyone, I strongly suggest <laughs> you start practicing it because whatever you put in, it could take six months, it could take four yeah. years, but it will happen. It will happen if you believe, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. okay. So your chapter, yes. if you had to tell me three of your greatest points that you, I mean, I, I read it, so I know, but um, for the audience who hasn't had a chance yet, which you go on Amazon and you should order it, um, you can order it on Kindle and it's, it, you know, just, it's in a phenomenal book, but, um, and you can check out our link tree. So you'd be able to order on that. Yeah. Three takeaways that you wrote about. So, um, I would say one of the things that, um, I think a lot of people or women, men, they get held up in life is that they're always getting ready to get ready, whether it's getting ready to go on a diet or getting ready to make a move in their relationship, whether they want to take it to the next level or they want to end things or in their business, like they know they want to do something more, but they don't feel like they're there yet. Um, because I, uh, I'm not many people know, maybe they do, but I, I went through a, a pretty rough divorce where uh, my ex-husband was, you know, having, you know, being unfaithful m many times. And I, I finally had to, you know, end that and then reinvent myself and create my career from scratch, moving back home to my hometown. And I've learned through this process. And what I tried to, you know, elaborate on in my chapter is that you're, you're never ready for anything in life. You're never ready for your marriage to end. You're never ready for, to have a baby. You're never ready for your business to explode. You're never ready 
in a good way. You're never ready for um, COVID or whatever it could be, but you have to make the best of the situation and find the positive side of it. Even if it's the crappiest of times, you have to find the, the optimism in it. And that's kind of what I tried to explain in my book. And, and as someone who's around you often, I think the authenticity in what Becky wrote, there was a lot of humility and there was a lot of honesty and you were very open and sharing your heart. And um, I don't think that that's, I think that's why people, that's what people are craving is this authenticity in things. We wanna see the, the truth. And I think Becky did, she shared the truth. Yeah. So I think that's, that's phenomenal. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's, that's one of your pointers. The second pointer, which I, I just wanna add that, I, that I, I'm gonna mention that you didn't mention was mindset, which I thought was really impressive because everyone talks about being positive, but you talked about how you went from a place of being in such a hole Mm -hmm. that you had to bring yourself out of that with your, so you practiced it mm -hmm. exactly what you're, what you're about to share. Yeah, your positive mental attitude, so your PMA, and uh, you'll hear other motivational speakers talk about it, like Tony Robbins or Andy Frisella, um, your positive mental attitude, and even when things are going really bad, like when I moved back home to Pennsylvania after getting divorced, I was trying to pay my bills and selling real estate, and no matter, I was working really hard, like 60 hours a week, day in and day out. And um, as you know, it's 100% commission based and I didn't have money coming in and I had to get a part-time job as a waitress. And uh, it, times were definitely tough, but I didn't let that deter me because I knew that I would succeed. It was inevitable. You, you proceed as though success is inevitable every single day. And when you do, it's just like one day a light will turn, will switch. I swear to God, I can't even explain it, but we felt it yeah. in our lives together and, and separately. Um, but yeah, so just staying positive and whether it's saying affirmations in the morning or reading a book that is all about positivity and like reading someone else's story to help inspire you yeah. through tough times. So that would be, yeah, it's really important to stay positive even even when it's really shitty. Yeah, it's I, that's actually one of my weaknesses. Is I, I, my default setting is to always think about everything that's gonna go wrong, and, and I automatically think it will. So I've even found myself recently, just yesterday, <laughs> at the craziest I'm laughing because it was actually insane. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I texted Becky and I'm like, I had the worst day like it, it, in my past, I would have said it was a terrible day, but then I was like laughing about it. And I'm like, this is like meant to happen. And everything that had happened that was so terrible ended up turning into something phenomenal. So it was yeah. like, and I was like, wow, it's, it's all in that positive mental attitude, mm -hmm. 100%. So yeah, the other point that I love that you brought up in the book was how you grew your business and in, in, in growing your business, you set goals that you had no idea how you were going to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so with that being said, I would say it's important that you don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? So studying and reading books about other people in your industry, uh, or that you look up to, even if they're not in your industry, what they have done to gain the success and traction that they've, that they're already at and taking their process and procedure and just tailoring it to your life. Don't try to reinvent something that, you know, is totally brand new and totally no novel. And you want to make, you take the wheel and just make some small tweaks to fit it to your lifestyle and your business and then move forward. Um, because that's what I did. And I, um, I went into my new brokerage when I moved back to um, the Doylestown area and I shadowed the, top agent solo agent in my office and at the time this was in 2014 they were doing 10 million dollars in volume and at the time i mean that is still a lot of money yeah. um for sure but at the time i was like that is like that would be like us setting a goal of like 500 million dollars yeah. like it's a huge number like right. i don't even know how we would be able to do that right now yeah um and I, I had no idea how I was going to get there. I had no clients. I had no sphere of influence in the area. I had no friends that still lived in Doylestown because I'd moved away to go to college and then I got married and I wasn't in the area for a long time. I had no idea. 
But I put that goal uh, on my vision board. I looked at it every single day. And then I studied and, and, and followed and, and shadowed the agents that are actually living it. And I, I, I grinded and I did it every single day for a long time. And I actually didn't see like so many people in this day and age want an instant gratification, instant results. And that's not, you may get that, but then what's the, the what's the excitement? Yeah. About? Like, yeah. right. It's just like, then you get bored and yeah. you're like, okay, well, what else is there? And then, yeah. I mean, and you don't have that sense of total accomplishment when you know that you grinded and, and you worked super yeah. hard and you put your heart and soul into it. Um, so that's what I did. And I, I would say it was a, probably about six months at least that I did this for. And I'm in the grand scheme of things, six months is not even that long. Yeah. Like, I mean, but it seems like forever. It seems like forever when, you're, when, you're, when you're in it. Right. And uh, especially when you have no money coming yeah. in and, and you're going through a divorce and, and you're lonely and you I just feel like there's no end in sight and, and, and you can't pay your bills and it's just, it's tough, but, um, but I was able to come through on the other side to share the story. <laughs> so yeah. Amazing. Thank you. I'm so proud of Thank you. you. <laughs> I, um, so you need to buy the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are dedicating this podcast episode to this for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it's for anyone who is in a brink of wanting to do something and don't even know how to even begin. Um, it's, it's destined to, there's, there's, I, I say God plants visions in our hearts because it's a taste of what he wants for you to have. It's a matter you do not determine when or, or how you just have to show up. Mm -hmm. And when you show up and you show up in a big way and you show up ready and that preparation, right, meets opportunities, it equates to success. This is this moment for Becky, right? Yeah. She prepared for this to be, able, she wasn't ready to write a book in 2016. No, you didn't have the, you were meant to write about exactly where you're at and in and, and, and this, this moment in her life and, and what we're doing and what you're, you know, so. Yeah. It's an amazing time. It I'm is. so excited, guys. We just can't, we're over the moon. I think we, I think everyone on the team has shared. We, we have broken social media. I think we broke the internet with and this. And we've just begun, guys. It's only been three hours and we have a whole day ahead That's of us. That's right. So. Kim Kardashian thought she could break the internet. She's she uh -uh, <laughs> okay. They haven't met the Artemis lady. That's right. Wait, tell them about Artemis. The Artemis. Oh, and then, so I'm like preparing to the, for the launch today. I was up till pretty late. Uh -huh. And I don't really watch the news because it's honestly depressing. So I just have like music on when I work or like a podcast in the background. And, um, but my, my mom moved in with me. So she was watching the news. So it was like, get off in the background. And I like hear like, Oh, the, the rocket ship Artemis just launched today to send the first woman into to the moon. And I'm like, what? And I look on TV and I'm like, there's a rocket named Artemis and their whole mission is they're sending the first woman to the moon. And we on our book launch day. On my book launch day. It's launching, catapulting into the air and everything's being, you know, the book is launching, everything's catapulting. And we didn't create the, obviously, if you've heard from day one, the name Artemis had nothing to do with this rocket ship. No. Um, so we had no. no idea this was even However, I, I actually wish it kind of was. I know. I mean, very, I mean we might switch. Maybe. Story. Yeah. Going forward, <laughs> Artemis was inspired by a rocket ship. <laughs> Exactly. And so it just, and so I, I texted everyone like 1 a.m. last night, like, guys, before I forget, there's this rocket ship named Artemis. And you need to check this you out. out. And then my dad, you know, was, I didn't talk to my dad at midnight last night. I, I get a text from this morning at 8 a.m. and he's like, hey, I didn't know if you saw this, but Artemis, there's a rocket ship. And then he's okay. like, when are you, when are we going to the moon? I want to be on, I want to be on the ship. We're already there. We're I said, on. I said, dad, that's the five year plan. That's how our son is. I love that. <laughs> well, um, will we selling that next? Uh, yeah, interested in your moon real estate. Yes, okay, moon real estate. We're selling um, intergalactic moon moon front properties. <laughs> moon front. Uh, you can have sun front. You know, <laughs> Jupiter, Neptune. Yeah, one of the planets. Pluto. Right on. Is that Pluto? Uranus? Yes, Uranus. <laughs> We probably shouldn't drink rosé. Honestly, but. this is the well. Becky and I are on a cleanse right now. We are. Shout out, um, my sister-in-law Marie and also Nino introduced us to Purium. If, if you've never heard of this, and we're not advocating for it just yet because we're not done yet. Yeah. However, we I've completed my first ten days tomorrow. Yes, um, I am down twelve pounds. Ooh, I know. Um, I've been trying to lose this weight. I know. It's been a year it's, since it's, I've had the baby. It's launching off now. Okay, okay. I swear. 
Um, and I was so focused on the weight loss that I forgot to get focused on that being healthy. And I finally switched my focus and now it's just coming off and I don't even, I'm not even weighing myself. I just happened to jump on the scale this morning. Cause I felt like I need to track it, but I haven't started the 10 day intensive. So the next podcast, I will let you know how I'm feeling and I'll let you know where to order um, yeah. depending on, we don't, we don't want to advocate it. for anything unless we've absolutely done that. Tried and true and gone through with the test of us because yes. we're pretty tough critics that's right guys so thank you so much for joining on my the amazing book <laughs> oh my god um and be sure to order it on amazon yep you can go to amazon we're going to make sure we link it to um our podcast it's going to be on our link trees and our bios yep. on instagram youtube so live love artemis Raffalina is on Instagram, Raffalina underscore Artemis. I'm Becky underscore Artemis. You can go to our Facebook page. It's going to be all over there. Yes. So we would so appreciate your love and support. I cannot wait to see where this book takes us. Yes. I, our goal is to be on the New York Times bestseller number one list. Okay. And uh, I just, I'm so excited to see the doors that open, the people that it's going to inspire and the change that it's going to bring to families and communities and to other women that just need something to push them to go after their dreams and their goals. Yeah. So if you like what you've seen today, be sure to like, share, or subscribe. And as always, as always, be sure to live fully, give selflessly, and serve authentically. Guys, have a blessed, beautiful day. Take care.